the Journal, Lieutenant Josatsi Walker, 10th Mississippi Infantry. I waited a long time to put down the events of April 7th, 1862. Perhaps too long. I've always known that anyone who would read this would likely think me a madman. To them I say this, I am not mad. And it is my dearest hope that in revealing this story, I may free myself of it. Please know that I will not embellish or misrepresent what has happened to me. These words I write are the truth, though I wish to God Almighty that they were not. The battle for Shiloh was lost. With the arrival of General Grant's army and the great losses on the Confederate side, we knew the day was done. My own dear brother fell to a Yankee bayonet. I do not know if that was the catalyst, but something within me broke that bloody day. Colonel Smith sounded the retreat and I ran. In truth, I would have run all the same had the bugle not sounded. As I fled from the field, I was shot. I tried my best to keep up, but the bullet had torn through my leg. I fell, unable to do much more than crawl. I was in this low position when a cannonball shattered the earth next to me. The explosion threw me into a river, and I soon lost consciousness. I awoke sometimes later to find that the river had carried me to a strange harbor. I determined I was in a bog. Judging by the damp earth and foul smell, my time in the water had done nothing to remedy my leg. Mustering whatever reserves of strength I had, I crawled to a nearby hill in the hopes of escaping whatever might be lurking in a swampland. Nearly senseless from the pain, I managed to set myself upon dry land. It was dusk, still light enough for me to see that my situation had improved only slightly. I had escaped the battlefield, only to find myself in a long abandoned cemetery. Time and the rising waters had claimed much of it, but several grave markers still stood, like crooked teeth in a skull. It was against one of these headstones that I took my rest. The name upon it read Abraham Kale. In my delirium, I laughed and asked Abraham to keep me company while I died. But Abraham did not come nor did death. I lay on that morbid earth for days, I do not know how many. Spring, wain, er, spring rains kept me from dying of thirst, but their passing brought a multitude of creatures to feast and pester me. The days ran together, and my time away grew slight. After perhaps a third day, I found the courage to inspect my wounded leg. Oh, that I had not. A foul smell, worse than the swamp, confirmed my worst fears. The leg was gangrenous. A sickening rot surrounded the wound. Had I my saber, I would have attempted to remove the leg itself before the infection spread upward, but I had lost it in the battle. I knew the stories. I'd seen the hospital tents. This putrescent injury would kill me slowly, painfully, and there would be no help. I prayed. I begged God to deliver me, to send me any relief, but my weakness overtook me and I slipped back into oblivion. Upon awakening, I found I was surrounded by mist, illuminated by moonlight. A strange sense had roused me, a feeling that I was not alone. And as I peered into the fog, my feeling was confirmed. Drifting towards me was a woman, wrapped in a dark morning gown. Do you live? A voice like an angel. Had God heard my prayers? Do you let yet live, sir? In my shock, I almost didn't respond. Help me. Please. Rest easy, I won't hurt you. I am wounded. And suddenly she was there, kneeling down next to me. For a moment I could not speak, for never in my life had I seen such beauty. Hair so dark that I could not tell where the night ended and she began. Eyes equally dark, 
set against a face so pale she seemed to glow under the stars. She reached out and touched my face. Tell me, how are you hurt? My leg. Shot. Infected. May I see it? No. Please, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be proper. I have seen many such injuries, sir. I promise not to faint away. Uh. Oh, my. This is... Oh, my. I told you. There's nothing to be done. You wear a soldier's uniform. I am a lieutenant. You give up very quickly for a lieutenant. Well, unless you have a bone saw under your bodice. <laughs> I must have forgotten it. Who are you? Why did you... My name is Lark. Lark? Lark. Are you going to sing to me as I die, Lark? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Here. There's a bullet loaded into this pistol, and the powder should be dry by now. No. If you want to help me end my suffering. Do you have nothing to live for? Your wife? Your children? I'm unwed, and have no one to mourn me. A handsome man such as yourself? I find that hard to believe. It's true. I've always believed that when one finds love, true love, he knows it. And you never found that love? I... No. You must have dallied with local girls. That wouldn't be proper. You are a true gentleman, then. I was raised to treat women cordially. I cannot be that but what I was raised to be. Men like you are a rare breed. Come morning, there will be one less. I can save you. I appreciate your concern, ma'am. But I am a dead man and nothing more. You have to believe me. I am... I know how to stay up, stave off this rot without removing the leg. Impossible. I can do this, but you must trust me. How was I to trust this woman I had just met? And yet, the longer I stared into her dark eyes, the more I knew I'd do anything she asked. She touched my face, and her cool flesh took my fever from me. I could think clearly, see clearly. I gasped. What's wrong? I only... Please forgive me, ma'am. Lark. Lark. I, in my whole life, I don't believe I've ever seen a woman so lovely. That's the fever talking. It's the truth. I swear to it. Then will you let me help you? I will. You must know this. My help comes with a price. I have no money. I left it at the camp and... Not money. Something else. What? I cannot tell you. You must accept this condition before I can help you. What do you want of me? She did not answer with words. Instead, she leaned in and kissed me very softly. In that moment, I lost myself to her. If this was the price, I would pay it gladly. Do you agree? I do. Good. Thank you. Lightning flashed nearby, and for a moment I could see nothing. When my vision returned, Lark was holding a flask before me. What's this? Nothing to fear. Water with a few drops of laudanum. You will sleep, and when you rise, your leg will be well again. Will... Will you still be here? Yes, dear heart. I will be here at your side. And then she put the flask to my lips. I drank deep and slept deeper. How long I drifted in this slumber, I do not know. My dreams were troubled and strange, filled with buzzing flies and... and... It was the sound of chewing, of teeth tearing through meat. Both sounds grew louder and louder. It seemed to be coming from all sides, inescapable. And with a start, I was awake. The cemetery was quiet and still, and then the silence was broken by... 
Dear God, the horrible sound had followed me out of my dream. I glanced about, but my eyes had not yet adjusted to the dark. Suddenly, the world was lit again by a flash of lightning. And what I saw that night has stayed with me, and I see it still every day of my life. Lark, my beauteous savior, was bent over my leg. She must have heard my startled gasp because she looked up at me and her porcelain skin ran red with blood, my blood, and in her mouth, my flesh. The diseased tissue of my leg hung like ribbons from her lips. She tried to say something, but filth poured out of her mouth. Panic seized me. I managed to scramble upright, my hands searching for my pistol. Wait, please, listen to me. But I was beyond reason. I raised my weapon and fired. My bullet found its mark between her eyes. But she did not fall. Instead, she stared at me, her face a mask of unbearable sorrow. And suddenly, dear reader, what happened next was strain credulity, but you must know that I write the truth, however horrid. Lark's body began to shake and shudder, and with a grotesque lurch, the beautiful woman disappeared. Her body became a mass of writhing maggots. I screamed, but what else could I do? And then she collapsed into herself. Hundreds, thousands of vile worms fallen to the earth below. All reason left me, and I ran. My only sense was to run away from the water, to whatever dry land I could find. But behind me, I could hear Lark, or whatever this creature was that called itself by that name. I love you. I will love you always. I raced against the sound. Don't leave me. Husband, stay with me. I ran with renewed speed. You are mine. I rushed through the cemetery, into the woods beyond. It was at least an hour before I realized that I should not have been able to run at all. Resting against a large willow, I looked at my leg. It bled to be sure, but all traces of the wet rot were gone. The befouled flesh had disappeared, and healthy flesh remained. I ripped my sleeve open and wrapped it around the wound. My injury bound, I continued my escape through the forest. The sun rose and I saw before me a small town. I staggered towards it, my mind reeling from the events of the night before. I finally collapsed in the street, no longer able to think or even move. I came to several hours later to find a bespectacled old man looking at me. There now, son. You just rest. W where am I? A little town called Cully's Hollow. My name's John Winslow, and I'm the one patching up this leg of yours. A doctor? Best one in town. Also the only one in town. Do me a favor and bite down on this. He put a leather strap in my mouth. Go ahead and bite down good. This is gonna hurt. Ah! Oh! It has to be done. That alcohol's gonna keep this hole from getting infected. I'm surprised it hasn't been yet. Shot in the battle, were ya? I related to the doctor my escape from the Battle of Shiloh and how I found myself in the cemetery just side out, outside of town. I did not tell him of my night with whatever she was, but I did ask him if he knew a woman named Locke. Well, not exactly. Closest would have been Locke and Kale, I reckon. Who is she? Well, Where is she? Who she is is the wife of the doctor before me. Where she is is that very cemetery you ran out of. She's been dead gone on 20 years now. What? It's a hell of a story. You want to hear it? I do. Very much. Well... Larkin was married to old Abraham Kale, vicious son of a bitch. He was a doctor to some, but most called him a butcher instead. See, old Abe was a drinker, and a mean drunk too. 
He even took a nip or five when he was doing surgery. Well, turns out his pretty wife was a quick study and sometimes helped him treat the sick. Some say the only reason he didn't get rode out was because Law kept alive them that Abraham made worse. Well, like I said, he was a cruel bastard. Didn't like that people thought better of his wife than they did of him. He beat her. Uh -huh. And he'd have his way with her in a real ungentlemanly way. No! Well, one day Locke is healing up a man got run over by a cart, Caleb Gurney. He'd waited too long to get his foot looked at, and it started to turn. She was doing what most doctors don't do no more, using maggots. What? Oh, it's a good treatment. See, maggots, they eat rotten flesh, but they leave the good. It ain't pretty to look at, but it's real effective. Anyway, old Abraham came home drunker than a waltz and piss ant. He, saw, he sees his wife doing what he figures is his job and starts to beat her with something awful. Caleb tries to stop him, but he can't get about real good on his bad foot. By the time he pulled Abraham off Larkin, it was too late. He cracked her head open. Well, they strung up all day for it. Not that it had done the poor maggot woman any good. What did you call her? Oh, uh, the maggot woman. Just a name some of the young'uns around here gave her. Caleb said she kept a big jar full of wrigglers just to help out people like him. The old doctor tended my wound, but my mind reeled from the story he told me. In a week, I was well enough to leave, and I put as much distance between me and Cully's Holler as I could. But his story still haunts me, and will for the rest of my life. Because now I know. I know what the price for her healing is. At night, sometimes I feel them. The maggots crawling under my skin. I've taken a knife to my flesh countless times, but every time I do, they stop. She healed the wound in my leg, but the price... Stay with me. I know with great certainty what awaits me when I die. Don't leave me, husband. They will lay my body in the ground. Over time, the worms and maggots will consume me, and then they will become my flesh. I love you. Don't ask me how I know this. Just trust that it is true. I will love you always. When Josiah Walker finally dies, when his body becomes food for the worms, you are mine. Then the maggot woman will finally have her new husband.